like to start by thanking Dr. McKenzie and Dr. Krishnan for this invitation. Um, just a little bit of a background to start. Um, I have no disclosures. Um, classification, most of the dissections are usually ascending. About a third will be descending, starting distal to the subclavian. Uh, the most common uh, classification used to define these uh, dissection is the Stanford, where the B dissection is descending. Um, a description of the dissection is a disruption in the media layer of the aorta, where it causes a separation in the wall of the aorta. Intimal tear is present in 90% of the patient. The incidence of uh, type B aortic dissections is three per thousand and person per year. Uh, the pathogenesis, it's simple. It's a wall, st uh, wall strength and decrease in wall strength and increase in hemodynamic forces on the aortic wall. Large clinical studies have shown that 80% of the patients who develop these dissections have systematic hypertension, and the rest of the uh, uh, the rest of the reasons are essentially congenital uh, bicep bicep valve, aortic valve uh, degenerations, along with cocaine use, pregnancy, strenuous activity, and connective tissue disorder. Uh, Type B aortic dissection are broken down into the range uh, of time they are looked at. Um, acute dissections are within the first 14 days. This is where we, we can get some malperfusion, uh, possible degeneration to a rupture if, it is, uh, if the blood pressure is not controlled. Subacute is 14 to two months, and it is chronic after two months. They behave more like aneurysms, and there is a risk of rupture. Malperfusion, again, is rare at that point. So what are the hard complications that patients can uh, usually um, um, uh, show, show up with? Acute dissections, um, it is usually a rupture or an impending rupture. Usually a patient will keep complaining of the chest pain, um, and, um, and they can also pr produce malperfusion to the visceral renals or the lower extremities. Um, some of the softer complications are refractory pain, where uh, the, the, uh, the blood pressure control has not um, helped with the uh, dissection, refractory hypertension, and disorient, uh, disoriented uh, renal and visceral vessels. Um, again, these are some of the, this is some of the um, basic def definitions that are given. Pre presence of refractory hypertension is uh, patients still having hypertension with three or greater agents. That was not there prior to the dissection. Visceral, mesenteric, celiac, uh, malperfusion is, uh, again, with LFT, amylase, bilirubin, abdominal pain, so on and so forth. We know what uh, mesenteric ischemia and renal failure usually looks like. Um, and imminent rupture, which is usually the most common reason why we take these patients to the OR is when they keep complaining of abdominal uh, of chest pain is uh, usually with two successive CTs and there's an increase of the hemorrhagic pleura or the hematoma. So what do the dissection, the complicated acute dissection um, will, uh, with the malperfusion will show about 56% will have lower extremity ischemia, 36 will show renal ischemia, 20 with visceral, and others uh, with spinal and uh, minor ischemias. Um, uh, and a third will, will, will present with a rupture. This is a different priority. Here we usually try to stop the bleeding prior to expiration of the patient, and then we will look for the malperfusion towards the end. So what are we doing now to repair these patients? The IRAD data was very clear. Type B dissections, especially acute, are best treated with endovascular therapies. Open repair is associated with significant morbidity and mortality, as it is shown uh, on the Kaplan fire uh, curve on the right. Um, this was again tested with the virtual uh, registry, where the mortality was 8%, stable trial, where the mortality was 10% which shows TBR was actually proven to be superior than optimal medical therapy for complicated acute dissections. 30% uh, mortality for open versus TBR was 29% uh, 
percent versus two. Again, it showed uh, endovascular repair was superior. What about the optimal management for patients who are not acute? Uh, again, it was looked at at the IR data. Large trials revealed that calcium challenge blockers along with beta blockers are associated with improved long-term um, treatment. Calcium channel blockers are also reduce, reduce the expansion of the aorta over the long term. Uh, pain should also be uh, relieved with the opiates intravenously. Uh, chronic medical therapy, the heart rate and blood pressure have to be controlled. Ideally, you want it to be below 140 over uh, 90. Systolics usually below 120. Beta blockers are a must, uh, and calcium channel blockers have been shown to uh, help. Uh, what about the uncomplicated patients? and repairing them with TVAR. Uh, this is the data from the INSET trial that was in Europe. It showed that TVARs versus optimal medical therapy did not show any benefit in two years. TVAR showed favorable outcomes when it was followed out more than two years. However, at the same time, they recommended that it was not the optimal therapy for patients with uncomplicated acute dissections. And the absorbed trial also showed, this was the only trial which showed, uh, only randomized trial which showed uh, optimal medical therapy versus TVAR with optimal medical therapy. And this trial was underpowered, only 61 patients. And again, TVAR plus optimal medical therapy was shown to uh, give no uh, um, significant uh, improvement in patient survival within the hospital stay. So in conclusion, uh, TVAR is now the GLOW standard for um, complicated acute type B abdominal uh, and thoracic dissections. Uh, TVAR for complicated patients who are suspected of uh, growth enlargement because of the dissection should be followed very closely and repaired. And beta blockers and calcium channel blockers are the um, footstools, essentially, for uh, patients who uh, present with these uh, dissections. Thank you.